Wait, let me see if I'm following this. All of the girls on this list are random hookups or fans that may possibly have something against you with reason? Oh no. Oh no. No. No way. Oh, I was worried there. It's three pages long. Those are the ones I remember. I've lost contact with a lot of the others or forgotten their names. The number on the left is my guess for how angry they are, if that helps. <laughs> Doesn't help, does it? Anyway, there was something important you had to tell me. I don't know what the best way to put this is, but... Um, let's see here. Tell me about Veronica Kerrigan without asking me why. Don't ask why, but I need you to tell me about Veronica Kerrigan. What? Why? No. Ed, please. It's important. What is this? Don't let a single day go by without Ed telling me about some childhood trauma? Ed. Even with what she did to me, tarnishing her memory isn't what I had planned. She was completely off her rocker, but she was a kid and the daughter of a good friend of mine. Well, at least at the time. Trust me. Please. Only since I owe you one. What? <laughs> what? So there is some sort of connection. Daddy. <laughs> some subjects attach all their positive emotions to a parent figure. However, the mere fear of losing such an anchor could destabilize the subject forever. Okay, so a psycho reference. Got it. Sweetheart. Uh, what did the bread do to make you want to torture it like that? I don't know. It's fun. Can we go to the movies? Yeah, yeah, sure. If you take your medicine, we can go this weekend. Oh, Dad. What did the doctor say? So she faked her death. Her parents think she's dead. Got out, pretended to be somebody else, and then went after Ed. Spent her life going after Ed, I should say. That's better. Can we go to the movies today? Oh, uh, right. Not today. I have to work. You always have to work. Sweetheart, I'm meeting Ed Miller at five, so... It's always Miller. Uh, <laughs> what? Did you like our vacation last summer? Mm-hmm. Well, we wouldn't have gone to Paris or Rome if it hadn't been for Miller's book tour. It's always that Miller guy. And that's a good thing. If his second book goes like the first one did, I'll have a ton of time to spend with you. Besides, he's a great guy, and he really cares about you if you just give him a chance. But... It's just... Sweetheart, I'm running late. I have to brush my teeth. We'll talk about this later. So she feels slighted by a dad who's working all the time, and it's asphyxiated to Miller. Yeah, and she didn't take the pill. I figured. Why is the shopping list, again, eggs, bread... Oh, I guess they added tomatoes. Keep Miller away from Dad, figure out an action plan, you gotta hide the pill somewhere. Do the same trick from five years ago. What is that? You gonna break the glass? Veronica, baby girl, it's not Ed's fault that you got cut. It wasn't his job to pick up the broken glass. Better think of a different plan. Huh. So even right now, she's finding a way to blame Ed for something. Pick a wine, Ed. We have to work late anyway, so why not enjoy it? You should get to bed, Veronica. It's late. Who the hell is talking? Is it her to herself? Or is there some other paternal figure that is speaking to her right now? I'm not going to let them. Not the doctors, not Miller, not anybody. No one's turning me into a lame brain or stealing dad from me. Yeah, so attaching to father definitely 
crazy. I thought I saw a picture of uh, Hitchcock on there. Three mm. dead and one injured in a fire no. on Skid Row. What if something happened to Dad? What? Like, she's going to start a fire? That's her, her option? The jury has decided the death of the King of Pop due to overdose was involuntary manslaughter. Oh, so this was in 2011. I have plenty of pills, so that would have been. But they know they were mine. <laughs> so that would have been uh, Michael Jackson. But, uh, so. What is she planning on doing? <laughs> Pilling, like giving a pill to Ed? Oh, 60% of pa uh, pedophilia cases occur within the family, according to a University of Michigan study. So she's going to try and get him in trouble by making him have sex with her because she's too young? Like, is that what she's going for? Ew. Or at least setting it up so it looks like he's done something so that dad will back out of anything for him. Hmm. What if dad walks in and catches me? Lock the door. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. I don't think that's going to actually stop the door, but, you know. Also, what kind of businessman leaves his phone just lying around? Can you come at four instead of five? That way we don't have to finish so late. Why would she knock? Yes, Dad. I think the door is stuck. Can you open it from your side? <laughs> right. I'm turning it, Dad, but nothing's happening. Okay, I'll keep trying. Can I thought she deleted no, it. I can't. You try again. Oh, I see. She's deleting. His message and the message that she sent so that dad doesn't see it. Got it. I was really scared, dad. Oh, Jesus hey, Christ. Come on. It wasn't that bad. Mm, I love you so much, daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. <sighs> Get cracking. I'm going to be late for a meeting and you're going to be late for school. Yeah, right. The bus comes in 45 minutes. Okay. But don't get sidetracked, because then you'll miss it again. Yeah. So, Tell Dad's not gonna be home. Like be patient. Ten months till your birthday. And a promise is a promise. Who's Daddy's pretty little girl? <laughs> Veronica. Be good, sweetie. Nice. Ugh. Ugh. Forty-five minutes. Ew. Ew. What are we a part of here? She's gonna take pictures of herself? <laughs> Those were good times. What is that? piece of glass? Not sure I understand what that was. What's the deal with this? You're the only one who knows what really happened to Mary. Yeah, I know I barely talk to you anymore, but I've grown up. What? There we go. <laughs> what? Who is this person? You're the only one who knows what happened to Mary. Who the heck is Mary?
What in the hell are... Th oh, got it. Her pills. She's got literally just a jar of antipsychotics just chilling in there. It's like, I don't know. Maybe if you're drugging somebody to stop them from being psychotic, maybe there's a bigger problem going on. Everything was going just fine till Miller showed up. Daddy is mine, and everything will go back to being just fine. So, so her plan was to take, to fake her own death, take over somebody else's, make Miller go insane so that she could have her dad back? Like, <laughs> what? Maybe not. It has to look like he took the pictures. I'll save the photos there later. So does she need a camera phone? Tripod. Got it. So she needs to set up the tripod, then put the camera on it. Ugh. I, this whole this whole scene is just giving me the heebie-jeebies, man. This is gross. This is like inverted Lolita. <laughs> Where instead of there being an actual pedophile here, there's a, a girl who's enacting her pedophilia on herself, essentially. Ugh. Well, it hasn't shown us anything remotely sensual in this game yet, so <laughs> I doubt they're going to start now. Coming You're Reginald, because everybody's so School's rich. It's going to go by so slowly today. Hi, Ed. Where's my dad? I was just going to ask you the same thing. Oh. Then I guess I have to be nice. To people at our house <laughs> be the host yeah <laughs> you writers are so cool knowing all those complicated well, words you know we're not that cool should I tell Reginald to bring you something to drink that's okay I'm, I'm all right oh man I want to be a good host oh well then. yes whatever you want okay thanks and of course, you probably wouldn't recognize her being older, and also, you don't see certain individuals in certain ways when they're of an age. Let's see, let's pour lemonade into glass. Let's take all my antipsychotics and dunk them in there. Um. Oh, <laughs> there's just a pill here. God, she's really got a thing for drugging this guy. I love that she's literally like... <laughs> like, later on, she goes, Oh yeah, I've done this before. Exactly. But that, that time it was wine. <laughs> First time it was lemonade. I brought you the whole picture, in case you want more. Wow, you're the perfect host. Well, it's hot as Hades. Even worse in this uniform. I'm gonna get changed. Have you heard from your dad? No!
Why is she? Why is he unlocking it backwards? Also, you can tell there's a traceable thing. <laughs> like you could tell when a a picture has been taken on somebody's phone. She would literally have been better off trying to use the phone from the tripod and set it up. Cool. It'll be our little secret. I won't tell a single soul. Huh? Oh, Robert. Finally. Dad! I didn't think you'd be here so early. Uh, but you told me... What are you two up to? What's your little secret? Secret? Veronica? Um, Ed got here a little early because he wanted some pictures of me in my school uniform for something in his book. And he just took them on his phone, and they turned out super, super cool. You want to see them, Daddy? That was the end of a beautiful friendship. Robert threatened to report me to the police, but I did it myself. They arrested me, obviously, but when they inspected my phone, the picture's metadata indicated that the photos had been taken with another device. Plus, the time didn't match Veronica's testimony either. They found the same drugs in my blood as the ones present in Veronica's meds, hmm. as well as all the pills she hadn't taken still in her room. Robert apologized, but we decided not to continue working together. We grew apart. Not long after that, Robert checked Veronica into a mental hospital when I heard about her death. I called Robert in case, I don't know. He thanked me. We hung up and haven't spoken since. And that's it. I have no idea how Robert's been these last few years. I do. He came to me shortly after Veronica's funeral. He needed help and told me his story. Veronica was two years old when Robert adopted her. I never looked into her previous life, nor her biological family story. But I have a friend who might... Doctor. Are you going to tell me what on earth Veronica has to do with any of this? Veronica did not die in the psychiatric hospital. She died two weeks ago. What? Veronica is Faye. What? So wait, he adopted her? So she's not even his child? <sighs> As a kid, I'd pretend I was a pirate and unearth buried treasures. As a kid, I'd play spy games and discover classified information. As a kid, I made up a character I could talk to. As an adult, I buried my childhood. As an adult, I covered up my childhood. As an adult, the character I created took my place and never let me speak. My father succumbed to alcohol. My father got lost in obsession. My father lost sight of the world. My father became a stranger. My father was a reason my mother wasn't happy. My mother couldn't put up with him anymore and searched. My mother's only way of coping was to search outside the home. My mother didn't deserve to be treated the way she was at home. So. My sister Jenny was a product of that search. My sister Jenny wasn't supposed to be born into my family. My sister Jenny was the only thing that... My father reacted in the worst possible way. My father caused an accident that killed. My father deliberately killed my mother and alcohol led my father to cause an accident. Obsession caused my father to react. My mother and my sister died at the Brody Canyon. My mother and my sister were murdered at the Brody Canyon. My father wanted to liberate himself jumping off of that scene. My father didn't have the spine to own up to what he'd done and jumped off of that scene. Remorse led my father to jump off of that scene. I'd forgotten how I felt. Did I feel furious? Afraid? Sad? Did I feel hatred? Did I feel alone? Did I feel nothing? Did I feel everything? As a kid, I'd pretend I was a pirate and unearthed buried treasures. As an adult, I buried my childhood. My father got lost in obsession. My mother didn't deserve to be treated the way she was at home, so... My sister Jenny was a product of that search. My father caused an accident that killed. Remorse led my father to jump off of that same. My Aunt Claire buried my childhood. I'd forgotten how I felt. For 27 years, I haven't known who I was. 27 years of writing to hide myself. Only to turn into somebody I'm not. Drowning in sarcasm and lies. It's over.
A pleasure meeting you, Ed. I'm Dr. Lomas. Doctor in what exactly? Doctor? You got one hour. One. Pathetic. He's like he's trying to be some macho character or something. Start with the shave, I think. I think you look better with the beard instead of the stubble. All right, getting dressed. We're going with the suit. We're going casual. Looks like we're going casual. Hmm. I'm not ready to ride a motorcycle yet. So what happened to the cat? Is the cat alive? The cat jumped out of the freaking car. Like, why was the cat in the car? Oh, what's in the sink? Is he gonna drink water? <laughs> Look at him all grown up drinking water. Like in a way, he, it's like he's reliving the I childhood. I was so thirsty, I drank a glass of water this big in one gulp, Mom. So this is where Faye was. What did you say your name was? My name is Ed. Thanks, Ed. I'm Faye. If you could bring me some ice. How did she do it? Right? Does she see Ed as the reason why she was in the, the Hi. hospital? Guess who's calling? <laughs> the thing is, I'd like to see you again. Oh, and I think I lost an earring. If you find it, can you give me a call? Who the heck hmm. was that? Maybe. We'll see. Butterfly. <laughs> Metamorphosis. He's changing. Got it. Okay. I think we're ready to go out. Or maybe not. What are we supposed to do? Find Jenny, face the past. So where the heck is Jenny? Is she in the backyard? Nope. It's a nice house. Wouldn't mind living out in the woods like this. Must be something upstairs. Maybe at the desk? Nope, already did the writing. Oh gosh. Wait a minute. Pirate book. Where's the pirate book? It's probably just hanging around here somewhere, right? Is that going to be his clue that the pirate book was there? So that's all happened? I got the window, maybe? So is this the window he climbed up? Must have been. Just everything changed, of course. What on earth am I missing here? It's gonna be like one small thing that doesn't really matter. Find Jenny, face the past. Okay. 
Back downstairs we go. Face the past. Oh, do I need my jacket? Nope, I don't. Maybe later. What well, has to do with the past? Something in this room, maybe? Ah, yes, the lost socks. It's a trip to our past. So, Pet's dish isn't here. So is Pet dead? Pet still lost out in the wilderness? What's going on? Sure, what else is important here? This is the part where we throw our hands up in complete and utter disgust at the fact that we have no idea what little last tidbit we're supposed to grab before we walk out this door. Do we need keys? No, I've got a key. Got a key to my motorcycle. Drank the water, looked at all the knives. Ah, what? Oh my gosh. They got a box up at the top. That's what's important. Totally forgot about that box. One day you'll find a real treasure, Aunt Claire. Mom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's not your fault, sweetie. It's just that when Daddy's sad, he gets upset. You're never going to get sad or upset like that. Promise me. So you just bottle up all I of promise. the negative emotions over time. I'm sure that goes over well. Alright. Now is it time to leave? Oh, something on the ground. Fallen chess piece. Night to B6, Sam. You're still screwed. Where was that? Oh, that was in his car. Or in the tra in the trail uh tractor. Unless he also had one. Put the chess piece back. Come on, you can step outside. Whoa. Where do you think you're going? I ask you a question, Eddie. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> you think going out there and facing the world will make you someone? The hell it will. <laughs> I know you, kid. You're a piece of junk like me. 
You're useless. <laughs> No, how to love without hurting me. You ruin that. Because you don't really care about anything. But oh, yourself. Come on. You get the right button. And your pain. I'm not going to let you go around hurting people like I did. Just end your miserable life. Ed! Honey! You finally went outside! Come and give your aunt a kiss. Go push her too. <laughs> I knew we could do it together. Just like we did last time. Last time we didn't do anything. Eddie, honey, are you tired? Maybe you should lie down for a little bit. I'm fine. I don't need to lie down. It's just I'd like to talk about... Did you have breakfast? Do you want a little juice and some toast? Why have we never talked about what happened? Why have we never talked about everything that happened? What Dad did? Eddie, what have I always told you? Some things are better left unsaid. Or do you want some bacon and eggs instead? When it's Mom and Dad died and you took me with you to San Bernardino, I remember night after night of you telling me how much Mom and Dad loved each other. How both of them watched over me from the stars with Jenny, happy to see me happy. Because I had to be happy. I understand why you did it. But those buried memories slowly ate away at me from the inside. I'm tired. I'm hmm. going to lie down for a bit. <laughs> All clear. She can't handle there it. There are eggs in the fridge and enough oranges. After the nap, I'll make some three bean chili. We ate some not too long ago, but it's your favorite, so I guess. All clear. <laughs> Please. Please. Aunt Claire. I don't know what happened to your dad. I don't, or why he changed like that. It happened so fast. Over the course of a few months. Two years before the end. No reason or explanation. Your mother and I, we tried everything. We talked to him. We asked him. We begged him. We supported him. We got him help. But in the end, we lost him. All your mom had left was you. The possibility that you could still be happy in spite of it all. I would have just said through the door, like, it's okay. <laughs> Again, you did the best you could with what she had. Boss! 
We pulled the ivy off the wall. You want us to plant it somewhere else? Burn it. Oh. Uh, he had that done. What's this over here? Just a bench. Just a bench. This is where Faye was. I feel like I should go back up to the house. The tree house, I mean. Boss, you sure you want us to tear down the tree house? It just needs a little paint and varnish. Stick to the plan. Tear it all down. Whatever you say, boss. But any kid would be thrilled. Where are you? Hmm. I wonder why he said to tear it down. I mean, I, I get why he said to tear it down, but I wonder why it's still up, you know? Alright. I think we're... Oh, maybe we can go this way. Go down to the lake. Anything worthwhile down here? No. Can I get up there? I can. But no. Still no. There's something out there though. You like how the dock's coming along, boss? If I were you, I'd turn that frame over there into a bar. Throw parties all day, all night. And people will be like, I got invited to a party at Ed Miller's yesterday. The writer, that guy, is living the life. If they only knew. When was the last time someone came over? <laughs> Faye. <laughs> All right. Have you faced enough of your past yet, Ed? Those are nice steps you put in. Oh, let's go up to the lookout. Beautiful view. I mean, again, this would be a really nice place to live. Albeit if you had better parents, but you know. Beggars can't be choosers. Or choosers can't be beggars. Alright. I don't know if I'm ready to ride a motorcycle. Then what am I supposed to do with this? Is there a car somewhere? Am I supposed to wait for somebody to come and get me? So I've checked out the carport. Is there anything on the porch, maybe? Ah. Oh. Put the chess piece back. Oh, but it's not missing a chess piece. It's definitely a keychain one. Night to be six, Sam. You're still screwed. <laughs> Boy, don't you remember anything I taught you when you were little, huh? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. He castled. Uh. I always forget about castling. You 
always defend by attacking, okay? The trick is, always have a safe place for your most valuable pieces. No fun if there's no risk involved. No game if there are no pieces. Huh. What's wrong? Aren't you gonna move? You're a wise old man, Samuel Franklin. Your chess and fishing advice is never really about chess and fishing, is it? I'm just an uneducated old farmer boy. Stop reading into everything. The one using all the pretty words here is you. Not true. We're more alike than you think. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> By the way, I know it's not your birthday or anything, but... I saw this the other day in the window at the antique store on East Main, and I thought, well, Frankie Lane, chess, so, uh, I don't know. It's a valuable piece, so you know. Keep it in a safe place. Know what? In the early 80s, I was convinced that the Russians were going to fry us all with a nuclear bomb. So I built a bomb shelter under the ranch. I built it myself. With no help from anybody. You're kidding me. Anyway. It can house uh, up to seven people. It has running water, its own energy supply, no one knows it exists. What? Not even my nephew, Adam. Just Esther. And me. Why are you telling me about it? Look at us. Look at us what? Neither one of us has... I mean, we're both missing, we're family. Uh, about that, I, I met, uh, no. No what? How long have you known? Since Esther saw you leaving the mall. She saw the diapers. In the trunk of your car, too. I've been holding her back a whole week. So she wouldn't come drill you with questions. Hmm. Mm. Uh... Well... I met a girl a while ago and, uh... Uh, no. The baby is... Uh, uh, I don't know where to start. Uh, no rush. Whenever you've got it figured out. So, in telling them he killed you know that, them. That if the Russians go crazy again, the girl, the baby, and you are all invited to live in the bunker. So she had to kill him because anyway, he found boy, out. Your turn. Are you gonna make a move or what? Is she in the bunker? 